Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Real glad that you could join us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Hawkin Miller. He was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy or DMD at the age of five. And he's joining us here on the program to talk about his personal journey and how he had to basically turn to video games as an option to stay competitive and connected as his friends advanced in sports while his disease progressed. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Hawkin Miller, and thank you so much for taking the time this evening. Yeah, thanks for having me, Neil. You're 23 now? Are, are you 23? Yes, I'm 23. 23. And at the age of five, you were diagnosed with DMD. What is Duchenne muscular dystrophy? Yeah, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a rare form of muscular dystrophy uh, affecting uh, all muscles in the body. It results from a lack of the dystrophin protein that is produced in the body that helps strengthen muscle cells. And so when that is not as present in my case, uh, muscles are more likely to break down and then eventually lose function over time. So, you know, that's why I couldn't play sports. Even if I was able to, I couldn't because it would cause irreversible damage to my muscles. Being diagnosed at such an early age, what causes this? Is this um, an environmental thing? Is this genetic yeah, it's genetic, and it can be you know, passed down um, from both parents. Uh, usually, some of the mothers um, are carriers, and that can have uh, health impacts on them as well. But in my case, it was just a genetic mutation. It wasn't passed down um, from generation to generation at all. It just kind of happened. And what really keyed them on to knowing that something was wrong was, you know, I would play, you know, AYSO soccer, and as hard as I tried, I couldn't keep up with everyone else. My parents initially thought, oh, is he not trying hard enough? But soon they realized it's because it's just not possible for him because of this diagnosis. And to me, while well, I don't remember much about that period in my life, I do remember that it was very peaceful knowing that it wasn't necessarily my fault that I couldn't do these things. It was something that I could not control going on in my body. Is this something that affects uh, men and women equally, or is it more prevalent in men? So it only really affects boys. It's an X-linked uh, chromosomal disorder. Mm-hmm. So there are some women that have it, but very, very minuscule amount. It's mainly focused on boys and, and young men, obviously. We've all heard of muscular dystrophy, but uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, is this extremely an extremely rare type of muscular dystrophy? It's it's pretty rare. I wouldn't say it's extremely rare. It's not like there's, you know, 30 people in the world, but I'd say I think the estimate is about one in every 3,500 births in the U.S. Um, has Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So when did you turn to video games? Uh, obviously, as you said, you know, you, you couldn't keep up with regular sports, and I'm sure as time progressed, you internalize that uh, reality even more. When did you turn to video games as uh, a competitive outlet? Yeah, I think it happened almost immediately. And I, at that time, didn't think I was, you know, turning to it to necessarily, you know, be able to compete with others. I think it's not until recently that I realized that's kind of why I did it. But I, I did start at a very young age. You know, I had my a red um, a Nintendo Game Boy Advance SP that flipped up. That was, you know, one of the early, uh, the later generations of the Game Boy, but that was kind of how I was introduced to video games. And, you know, I was really young and it was an opportunity for my parents, you know, we would have nice dinners for them to like talk after dinner and, you know, about life. And, you know, I would get bored and want to go. And that was the device that, you know, they gave me once we finished eating to, to hold my attention a little bit more. And that kind of morphed into a whole new perspective for me about, what video games uh, could do for me Mm -hmm. and just enjoying that as in my free time, like other kids might've enjoyed playing sports. Now I was still very active as a kid and it was definitely a hard balance for us to strike as, you know, wanting me to have a childhood, but then also not going as hard because we wanted to save my muscles uh, for later. And I think it, it ended up being a great balance and it definitely worked in my favor. But again, video games was something that, I could, you know, unwind doing, whereas other kids would run around to unwind. And so from that, from then on, I, I got, you know, a PlayStation and I was playing Gran Turismo and racing games. And when I was old enough, I 
started getting into first person shooter games and being competitive in multiplayer game modes yeah. there. And, you know, I would have friends come over throughout middle school and high school. You know, they would come over thinking, this is the video game house. They're going to come over, yeah. have fun, play video games with Hawken. We're going to play, you know, Halo. We're going to run around in Modern Warfare and kill each other. Yeah. And I was always the best at the games, which made, made me feel better about myself. Like, I, I could be good at something. And so that's kind of how that whole idea took root in me. Now, I understand that you're participating in um, some very specific gaming competitions having to do with your condition. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So we have a Twitch uh, gaming channel called Duchenne United Gaming, uh, Doug for short. We have a little golfer <laughs> as our logo for digging, Doug. <laughs> and that will be a Rocket League tournament with uh, Boys of Duchenne and some family and friends. And there'll be, you know, a kind of an elimination bracket with, with people on different teams and there'll be a grand prize at the end. So mm -hmm. this will be a fun way for people with Duchenne to, to play with each other, to compete with each other, talking about how we can be good in video games and not necessarily physical activities, mm -hmm. but we can be good in that and, and excel in that. And so that's really what it's all about. And then also just connecting with other guys with Duchenne and sharing our stories and sharing a common experience. Have you formed some some pretty uh, solid relationships uh, that go a little bit deeper than just gaming? Uh, you, you share a bond because of uh, DMD or, or any other common interest other than gaming through uh, gaming? Definitely, especially more recently. I've met a few guys that, well, I have met them before, but mm -hmm. I'm now connected with them through gaming. And when we're playing, you know, it is mostly focused on gaming and me like ordering people around to find them what to do. I'm kind of a backseat gamer when it comes to that, but it's also <laughs> a chance for us to talk about, you know, what devices am I using? How, how can I make this video game easier for me to play? How can I play for this period of time? Mm -hmm. What, what kind of diet do I have? How are you approaching this? Um, you know, dating is one that comes up, yeah. uh, you know, girls, all that thing. And so we're able to communicate past that and pass the video game. And even if we're not necessarily talking about life, we're still experiencing it together. And I think that can help build friendships as well. Where can our listeners get some more information about uh, this gaming initiative, about Duchenne uh, muscular dystrophy as well? Yeah. Uh, your listeners can go to uh, careerduchenne.org. That's C-U-R-E-D-U-C-H-E-N-N-E.com. And there'll be more information on the site. Well, Hawken, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Man, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. You too, Neil. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Hawken Miller. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.